wanted to start with something that I realized a number of years ago. And it was, it was this. The future already exists inside the minds of those who dare to dream. I want you to think about it for a second. What it means is that collectively, especially with a group like this, inside of all of our heads, we know exactly what the future holds. And we know that because we planned it. So the title of this talk is called Write Your Future. Now first, there we go, you gotta point it this way, there we go. Um, a little bit of my background. So I grew up in Illinois, many of you probably did too. And I went to the University of Illinois for my bachelor's and my master's degree in engineering and then entrepreneurial engineering. And then what I do today is I develop communication technologies. Communication technologies to hopefully make the world a better place. While I was here, uh, when I was about 22, I started uh, my first company, which was called Ambient. We developed a technology called the audio, which what it does, it's a small wireless sensor, rests over the surface of the skin near the vocal cords, and it captures information that your brain sends, and then we translate that information into speech. So we did the world's first voiceless cell phone call, and we were one of popular science's inventions of the year. While I was working on that stuff, I had another idea. And it was, again, for another communication technology, but this time, this one was for connecting people directly. Connecting people just like you in the situation that you're in right now. What the technology does, it's called One, and it lets you know when there's people that are right next to you that share something in common with you. So what we hope to do with it is to basically get you to know all of the people who are standing right next to you, sitting right next to you, walking right past you, so that hopefully you guys meet and you talk, you become friends, and together you go and do some amazing things that help make the world better. So that's a little bit of my background, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't tell you the, the story that's behind it, the, where all of this stuff kind of came from. Um, so, all good stories start like this, once upon a time. And so that's how it began. Once upon a time, there was a 17-year-old kid who was skateboarding outside of his house. There wasn't anyone around for miles. And as he skateboarded, for anyone who knows anything about skateboarding, he ollied up into the air, and something very odd happened. He passed out. His body fell lifelessly to the ground. And about 20 minutes later, he came to with his face on the cement. And he had lost his short-term memory. Your short-term memory is the thing that keeps you knowing what each second came before the one that you're in right now. Now, he eventually regained that ability. But it started a chain reaction. That single event started a number of events, which all of those events taken into consideration are what has made the person who stands in front of you today. So after I had lost my short-term memory and it had come back, I got very interested in the brain. Very, very interested in the brain. And I was 17 at the time. And in particular, what I was interested in was memory, the thing that I had partially lost. And even though I was 17, I set forth a goal of mine. And that goal was, I would like to one day develop a piece of technology that would make it so that you could transfer human memory into something that you could hold in your hand. Now, if there's anyone in this room who thinks that a 17-year-old skateboarder has the skill or the know-how to actually create that, I can assure you you're 100% wrong. What I did have, though, was I had drive. And I had one other thing. I dared to dream that a technology like that was possible. And so I started with that goal. And any goal, if you're going to try to achieve it, you turn a goal into a plan, a set of steps. And so that's what I did. I made a plan. I got a piece of paper and a pen. And I wrote down step one, right? This is, this is a good way to start. What I did was I wrote my future. I wrote down a set of chronological steps 
that if I did those things, it could be possible that I'd actually attain this goal. So step one, step one was, was a pretty straightforward one, and you guys are in the middle of it. It was graduate college, okay? Step one, graduate college. Step two, many of you may have a similar step two. Step two is go work for a large company. Now, in particular, why? Well, because I realized early on that if I was going to make this technology, I needed to do it under the umbrella of a company. And so I wanted to learn how companies work, so it made sense if I would go actually work for one before starting one myself. And that led to step three, start a company at age 30, okay? So that was 13 years ago now. So that was the plan. And I entered college, just like you guys did, and I knew I needed a number of skills. In particular, I had to get good at building things. So I became an engineer. How many engineers do we have here? Everybody. Okay, good. <laughs> so you guys know how to build stuff. The second thing that I needed to learn how to do was how do you actually start a company? And I can assure you it's, it's actually a pretty straightforward process. But nevertheless, I wanted to get some education in it. And I took some entrepreneur classes. And the third thing was I needed to learn about how the brain works. But as I'm sure most of you know, an engineering degree doesn't put you in front of you know, an audience or a, neuro a neuroscience professor. So what I did was I took the skills that I was learning in engineering and applied them to the field of neuroscience to learn about it and to show that hopefully I could one day achieve the goal that I was looking for. And so that's what I did. And I took a business plan writing course as one of the entrepreneurial education things. And at the time I was working, I started to experiment with, um, you guys are probably familiar, you've heard the term brain waves. So I was experimenting with using brain waves to control a computer mouse. Now, when put in the context of a business plan, and you had to analyze how are you going to actually take this, take an idea or a technology or a concept and turn it into something that could actually make money, it became very obvious very quickly that controlling your mouse with your brain was probably not all that profitable. It's not, there's, there's easier ways to do it. It's your hand, right? <laughs> so, but if you, tweak, if you tweak the idea a little bit, you start to develop some, some pretty interesting possibilities, and that's what we did. So we, we said, rather than trying to um, replace the computer mouse, what if we tried to replace the computer keyboard? In particular, what if we could capture signals from the brain and translate them into speech and make a more direct communication channel between the person? So at the end of the class, at the end of the, at the, end of the business plan writing course, uh, there was a competition, a business plan competition. You guys familiar with COZAD? Yes? Okay, good. Um, so we won that. Um, and I'm sure many of you guys have either been in it or some of you have won it as well. And the judges, they, they said to me afterwards, they said, so how's the, the, the technology that you wrote about? So in the business plan, all we had to do, again, paper, pen, write. Write down about some fictitious science fiction concept that I had no skill or ability, again, on how to actually build. But that was okay. You just had to write it down. And so that's what I did. We won the competition, and I began actually working on the technology while I was a student. And so we started very simply. We said, could we make a device that could capture this activity? That answer was yes, as soon as we tried. And we said, could we make a device that could capture this activity where we could distinguish between the words yes and no? So that you sit in front of this thing, you put the device on, and when you want, to, want it to say yes, it says yes for you, and want it to say no, it says no for you. Yes, we could do that. We went from doing two words to five words, from five words to 10 words, from 10 words to 100, and then from 100 to an open set. And during that time, during that time, we started a company. Now, I was 22 at the time. And I, I remember this moment like it was yesterday. I said, stop. I can't do this right now. I'm supposed to start a company when I'm 30. <laughs> this isn't in the plan. But I went with it. And so, and we went on to do some of the technological achievements and things that I talked about at the beginning in my background. Now, as, as we went forward, 
I started to question and think about why, why did I define that original goal when I was 17? What, what was underneath it? What was, I trying, what was I really trying to do? And I asked myself why. And then I asked myself why again. I kept asking why to each answer that I had until I got to an answer that I couldn't, ask, I couldn't answer or ask the question why anymore. And the answer that I came with to why I was developing this technology was very clear. It was to help people. And so now reframing my life into developing technology to help people, I started to think about, well, what is actually the best way to help people? And that's where I ran into a problem. You see, I was born with only two hands. And so it's very clear with the limited lifetime that the number of people that I can help is finite. It's actually probably really small. And so the number of problems that I can fix is even smaller. But that's where communication comes in. Communication is this really interesting thing where it's the transport of information from one person to another. And so when you start thinking about communication, something interesting happens. If you could get the right information to the right person at the right time, then that person would make the right decision. I have an implicit assumption about mankind, which is that man is naturally good. If there's anyone here who disagrees with that, I will happily fight you. <laughs> I'm pretty confident that it's true. Okay? So what that means is that basically if, if I can empower people, if I can get them the information that they need, that they'll make informed decisions and they'll make the right decisions and then they'll fix all of the world's problems. And so if I can develop this communication technology, I can scale my two hands into all of your hands and we can fix everything together. And so that became, that became my new goal not just to develop this single technology, but to enable all of the world's communication. And yes, I know that's a lofty goal, but so was the first one. And I started to make headway on that, so I figured I could make headway on this too. So after defining that goal, I came up with another idea when I was in San Francisco, and I was walking down the street, and I was passing by a group of people that I didn't know. They were strangers, just like many of you guys are. And they look like my kind of people. They look just like how I dress. They look just like all my friends back home. And I was in this new place, and I didn't know anyone. And so as, our, as they came towards me, they passed right by. What was I supposed to do? Like, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, you guys look cool. <laughs> Can I go your way? Where, where are you guys headed? Let's hang out. <laughs> Right? So that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily work. But how many people are you around today? Look, there's so many people. How many, how many potential people do you pass by on a daily basis that an insight from them could change the rest of your life? A lot. And so that started me working on, as a side project, this technology that would allow your cell phone to detect when someone else's cell phone was nearby if there was a commonality between you so that you could actually go over and talk to them and meet. And so that technology is called One. And we've gotten it together, and we're starting to roll it out on college campuses. So what I want to do now, um, what I stand in front of you as, is a 30-year-old guy. Now, 30 was that magic number. That was the number that when I was 17, I said, I want to be starting a company. And what I want to do is to, I want to compare these two. I want to compare what I wrote versus what, what happened. Okay, so the, if you remember, the first step was graduate college. The second step was go work at a large company. Third step was, at age 30, start my own. Now, what actually happened? Graduate college, check. Two checks, I graduated twice. <laughs> they let you do that here. So, next one, go work at a large company. Totally botched that one, okay? Zero, zero out of 10 on that one, no points awarded. That's okay, that's okay, trust me, it's okay. Now the next one, start a company when I was 30, kind of did that one twice too. The technology that I just described to you about one was designed as a second product but spun out of the company and became its own. So there's, obviously between those two sets, they're, they're very different. 
They have a lot of the same driving motivations behind them, but they are actually different. And there's a word for that difference. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's called life. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Basically, you can be as analytical as you want. You can plan every step to a T of what's going to happen in your life. But the cool thing is when you're wrong and you planned, your, your reality actually ends up better than the original plan. And that's a really powerful thing. Now, I want to bring back where this all started. It started with a pen and a piece of paper and an envelope. Now, I can assure you that I'm not anyone special. My brain doesn't work any better than yours does. You guys have probably had less brain trauma than I have. So if anything, yours works better than mine. At best, what I am is a person who embodies some ideas. And I work really hard to obtain my dream. Now, a number of the people who are in the front rows, and for everyone else, you can still participate. If you reach underneath your chair, there's an envelope. So if there's not an envelope, it's okay. There was no prize money in any of them. <laughs> Open the envelope. And for anyone who doesn't have one, if you have a, a piece of paper, if you've been taking notes, you can do the same thing. Just start with a, with a fresh piece of paper. Now what you're going to do, inside the envelope, there's a pen. Take the pen out and write on the outside of the envelope, my future. Okay? That's all you have to do right now. For everyone who's in the back that doesn't have one, take just a fresh sheet of paper and write my future on it. Fold back up that blank piece of paper, put it back in the envelope. And you're going to take this envelope with you. This is, you're actually going to take it with you for the rest of your life. It's a pretty important piece of paper, just like this one is. Because it's going to guide you. It's going to guide your decisions and the things that you achieve. Now, you're not going to write what you're going to do for the rest of your life on this piece of paper right now. You're going to take it home. And before you go to bed, you're going to remember something. You're going to say, wait, there was something I was supposed to do right before I went to bed. What was it? I remember. I had to write my future. You're going to take this envelope out, and you're going to write some simple steps. Now, it doesn't have to be long. Okay? Do you remember how many steps mine was? How many steps was it? Three. Three. I think for anyone who got it wrong. <laughs> and I'll give you the answer. I'll give you the first one. The, the, the answer to question number one, step number one is graduate college, okay? So you, now you only have two of them that you have to fill in, okay? So this isn't going to be all that hard. But what you're going to do is you're going to write your future, just like I did when I was 17. Now, if you leave this piece of paper blank, don't expect anything amazing out of your life. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> but it takes thought and effort to have an amazing life. And all you have to do is write it down. Now, if you write a bad story, you guys have read bad stories before, they're boring, okay? They sound something like this. Well, I'm going to graduate school, get married, have some kids, and die. <laughs> right? If you write this on your sheet of paper, I will fight you. I will legitimately fight you, okay? There's so many people that have worked so hard to get you guys to where you are today. You have so much opportunity and so much potential. And like I said, I'm not anything special. I was just like you. So if I can do great things, then so can you. Now, if you write a story that captures your imagination, something that you don't even know any, how, any possible way how you're going to be able to obtain it, that's a good story. And what can I, I can assure you of is that tonight, when you finally fall asleep, you can't help but dream. The future already exists inside the minds of those who dare to dream. Thank you.